Hi, I'm Anthony from The Basement Reef, and welcome once again to our YouTube channel. If this is your first time tuning in, we're a retail aquatic pet store located in Columbia, Missouri. And this is our YouTube channel where we just love to share all sorts of things about the tanks and the animals in our store. It's been a while since we posted a video, and that's because it's been a little bit of a difficult year. Uh, the entire saltwater hobby has had a little bit of an economic downturn, so we just had to put our heads down and work through it, uh, spend a lot of time just focusing on making sure that the store is running efficiently. Uh, there hasn't been quite as much exciting livestock coming through or new projects and things that make for great videos, uh, but we've made it through that tough year. Things are starting to pick up a little bit. There's a little more time, and so now we're going to get back into the routine of making videos. Uh, we figured no better place to jump in than an update on our soft coral tank here since that previously uh, is our most viewed video on our channel. It seems like a good place to start if we're going to be making videos again. So this is in the very back of our store near the cash register. Anytime somebody comes to buy something, they're going to see this tank. And this tank does a ton for getting us new customers. People see this tank and they want to set up a saltwater tank. And it's great because being a soft coral tank is something that most people are going to be able to replicate. Uh, it's not like an SPS tank or something like that uh, where if a beginner tries to replicate it, uh, they're just going to be in for a rough time. Uh, this was designed with the intention of having easy to keep corals that people are going to be able to find anywhere and do this for themselves. So what do we have here? It's roughly a 60 gallon rimless tank. Uh, it's plumbed into an 18 inch sump, although there's not too much going on down there except for uh, some carbon and a light where we grow a little bit of chatomorph algae. Last time we took a look at this tank, we said that we were going to upgrade it, and that's still in the works, but we ended up doing something different with the tank that we had plans to upgrade this into. So we have another tank now that will eventually be the upgrade for this one. We're going to upgrade it into a six foot tank, so we can essentially just transplant what we have here into half of it, and then just do more with it. It's gonna stick to soft corals. In fact, I have lots of them growing out right now with that in mind. Uh, all of this pulsing xenia in here, if I put little tiny frags of soft corals in there, the xenia will just overgrow it. But if I take my time and spend a few months growing out some larger soft corals to get them up towards the size of some of these larger leathers that you see in here, then the xenia can fill in around it instead of growing over it and we'll be in good shape. So let's just take one more look at what's going on in this tank right now before we do end up upgrading it. As you can see, this truly is a soft coral reef tank. It's not dominated by soft corals. This is exclusively soft corals. There's not a single piece of stony coral in here. So, what's the first thing that most people see when they look at this tank? If you ask me, it's definitely the large sarcophyton or toadstool leather over on the right side of the tank. That's this guy right here. This is just a pretty standard toadstool leather, maybe a little longer polyps than your average variety, but it's a good beginner coral and it takes them a long time to get this big. I've had it for a few years myself, but it was large when I got it. It's about 13 inches across now, and as you can see, these polyps just sway randomly in the flow throughout the day, and it's really nice to look at. It's one of a few different sarcophytons in our tank. This one here is a popular variety called a Tyree Green Toadstool. It looks impressive enough during the day, but later we'll show you what it looks like when the blue lights come on. And this one here is a Biota White Willow Toadstool. Just a tiny frag now, but I'm excited to see what it grows up into. It's characterized by large, long, white polyps. It should be neat when it gets bigger. After that, it's really hard not to notice our large colonies of Simularia, or finger leather, sometimes also called a spaghetti leather or a rasta leather. That's this big pink guy right here. I've had this one for several years, and it's larger than a basketball at this point. These are an extremely easy to take care of coral, perfect for beginners. They grow really fast and really well, but they're nowhere near the nuisance of some other soft corals, like say, a Kenya tree. They just grow as these big, solitary specimens here, and they're great. Over in the middle of the tank is our green Cinularia colony. The green variety is a little more desirable and a little more expensive and maybe a little harder to come across, but this guy grows great for us and we sell frags from it all the time. And down here is what I've been calling a Nephthia, although to be honest I'm not 100% sure of the species on this guy, but he has some interesting contrast between the polyps and the base of his flesh. When you get up close, it's almost hard to tell that it's not 
a green star polyp or some other sort of, you know, more colonial soft coral. But nope, it's a leather. This is the first of our two Sinularia dura, or cabbage leathers. And these guys are phenomenally underrated corals. When you put them in enough flow and their polyps really open up, they're super cool. This green one here is brilliant, although it's a little closed up at the moment. And in the background, you'll see our nine-year-old Watchman goby. And in between all of that is our fields of Red Sea Xenia. This stuff has grown out of control, but I wouldn't have it any other way. It's fun to look at, the, that pulsing action of it is just very hypnotizing and entrancing. I find myself watching this tank all day long throughout the week, and a good part of it is because of this Red Sea pulsing Xenia. And that brings us to our fish in this tank. Here you'll see my pair of Ocellaris clownfish. The fancy Ocellaris up top, the female, is one of my older fish at 10 years old. And her partner, that B-grade Picasso with his little white mohawk, I've had for about five. And here one more time is our nine-year-old Watchman goby, and the first look at our sea lie cardinal fish. Although he's nocturnal, so he's not always terribly active during the day. Our most recent fish addition is a blue-sided fairy wrasse. That's this guy right here. He's been in the tank for about a week or two now, and he's really starting to get comfortable. Uh, he's still a little bit shy, but that's fairy wrasses. Uh, they take a while to settle in, but once they do, they can be tame as a dog, so I'm excited to get there with this guy. As evening hits each day, the vibe of the tank changes completely. With the white lights gone, all that remains is the blue, and while the pink and purple hues of the Xenia and leather corals wash out almost entirely, the green corals show their true fluorescence, and it is a sight to behold. The Nephthia, especially, shows its colors, whereas during the day, it's sort of green, but here, it's almost as green as that Sinularia above, and all of these green soft corals look like they have light coming from inside of them. That's how fluorescent they are. Here's the Tyree green toadstool, and our first look at these Clavularia, or fireworks polyps. They're hard to distinguish among the Xenia during the day, but under these blue lights, you cannot miss them. All of the corals take on a slightly retracted appearance, and most of the fish go to bed. The clownfish like to sleep among this chunk of Xenia, right here. It's also the perfect time to take a look at all of the feather dusters, sponges, and tunicates that live in every crevice of this nearly two-year-old tank. And here comes the sea lie cardinal. Remember how I said that he's nocturnal and he's more active during the night? Well, here he is swimming around, whereas throughout the rest of the day, he's really just hanging in one spot. This is one of my favorite fish, and you hardly ever see anyone keep them, and I'm not too sure why. And that takes us to the end of the video. That's a nice overview of the tank. There's a couple of fish that didn't show themselves. They're a little camera shy, a royal grama and a mandarin, but that gives you a good idea of what's going on here. I hope that you found something useful in this video, or at least enjoyed watching it, and maybe found some inspiration to start a soft coral tank of your own. As always, thanks for watching, and please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a ton. And if you're ever in Columbia, Missouri, stop by and say hi to us and take a look at the tank yourself.